I bought this cabinet a few months ago and I just recently rearranged my shop. I had it sitting on a table and it wasn't uh, really at the right height so I decided uh, I needed to make a stand for it. One of my goals for this project was to minimize the amount of waste. So you can see I just uh, milling up two boards and it should be just enough lumber to get the job done and as it turned out it was. So after the planer these boards are about two inch thick and I need to make one and a half by one and a half blanks for the panther router it's much easier if the material is perfectly square regardless of the dimension so there's all my blanks and they're all basically one and a half by two and I'm I'm just ripping off the this one bit to make it one and a half by one and a half and those those cutoffs are going to wind up uh, being my shelf material. You can see the stress in some of these pieces of wood as they come off. They they curl immediately. I cut 28 tenons and mortises to do this job. So I'm not going to show every one of those. I'm just going to show one of each running through so you get an idea of the workflow. You can see here that I'm using a gauge block to set the depth stop for the material. I found it's very accurate if you uh, can use some sort of a, a gauge instead of relying on the scale that's on the machine. It makes it very accurate. So I've made one pass on the tenon and I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees and cut it again and I've offset the fence just slightly so that I get some room on the radius on the end but I've set the template holder so that the, the thickness of the tenon slips in the mortise tightly but there's a little bit of a gap on the radius on the, the ends and it also makes the tenon concentric to the stock for sure. And here I've got a, a test piece just to make sure that I'm where I want to be. And then here's an example of uh, how the tenon fits in the mortise after doing some test cuts. You can see that there's just a very slight gap on the ends. That gives me some play and some glue surface. And then for uh, just an example, this is too loose.
Here's another tenon again from a side view just so you can see better what's going on there with the gauge block and the depth stop. I've also got a longer bit installed so it protrudes past the dust collector quite a bit so you can see a little bit better what's going on. If you notice in the other shots there's no wood chips flying around because the dust collector is right up on the, the end of the bit so it's uh, extracting pretty much everything that's getting cut. Plus, I just wanted to give you a great shot of my elbow in action. And here I'm just marking out the mortise locations roughly uh, for the four uprights so that whenever I get to the panel router I don't make a mistake and cut the mortise in the wrong location. Mortises go really fast so you can see here um, I don't have to worry about the depth stop or anything. I can just set it one time and I'm good to go. Uh, and I'm using the fence in the same location as it was previously for the tenons. And there's a fence stop on the front of the table to reference off of for a square. So that's four mortises cut there in real time, uh, and as you can see, it goes really quick. Here I'm just marking out those four parts uh, for the center shelf location. And here I'm improvising uh, a depth stop, basically, for the stock. I've drilled out the hole in my template uh, in the center so that the guide bearing shaft will fit into it tightly. And then I've got the centering bit in the collet. And that's a big piece of steel on the table there that I'm using as a reference for the stock. Uh, it's important to note that this is a little bit sketchy because you got to make sure that the panther router can't move around. So I've got the table pushed up against the steel table and I've got the panther router clamped to the panther router cart so that I can minimize any kind of movement there. Just have to be careful not to bump it.
And this is a different setup. I'm cutting mortises for the center shelf into the end piece. I'm just making sure that the stock is square to the table because the tenon is hanging off the front. And here I'm ready to start gluing up, uh, but this is kind of a jigsaw puzzle the way this thing is made, so it needs to be put together in sub-assemblies. So what I'm doing here is I'm gluing up the, just the center uh, support and I'm not going to glue the ends yet I'm just putting the ends on to locate everything so that it's it stays square and then I'm going to do the same thing for the this is the center shelf I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom and the top is actually open there's no center support because I need to be able to drain the sand out of the blast cabinet And that's with everything clamped up. And I'm doing the bottom piece there the same way. So now I've got my center supports glued up and I need to glue up my ends. So this is one side and uh, the other side you can see there has already been glued up. I've got my sub-assemblies all glued together and I'm going to glue everything together now. This can be kind of difficult to do by yourself and you're working against the clock because of the glue. And the camera battery died on me, and I didn't hear it alarm because I was so focused on what I was doing. So here's the final glue up. So I need to make some little shelf supports that can bridge the gap between the center support and the outside for the shelves. Uh, because the material is kind of thin if you put any weight on it it, it might bow so I'm, I'm just using some of the cutoff bits left over uh, from from trimming everything up and making some supports out of those here I'm just getting them all to exactly the same
So here I'm just using some pieces of steel to be able to cut some, some smaller bits off here. Um, my fence stop that's, that's there, you can see, um, only comes down to about 12 inches. So anything less than 12 inches, I can't really set a, a stop for it. So this is a, just a different way of, of doing that. Um, as long as you don't push too hard, those pieces of steel won't move. So here I just cut a gauge block out of scrap so I can mark the center of the space between the center support and the outside there. And those are all the little bits that I just cut up. And I've got a, a, another piece there to be able to make sure that I'm just slightly proud of the top surface so that I can plane it down and, and get everything exactly the same height. So there I'm just trimming the top of it down to this, the same height as the rest of the shelf. And I put some nails through the uh, cross piece and they blew through the bottom just a little bit because that's the only nails that I have. So just grinding those off with the die grinder. And then here's some little additional blocks that I'm putting in the bottom for the casters. This isn't a real super heavy application, so I'm not real concerned about uh, screwing this into the frame. I'm just going to glue it up. Remember, the glue is stronger than the wood. And then here's all the cutoffs from before. I'm just uh, placing them all in into the space so that I can get a measurement and figure out what distance they need to be. Uh, so I have equal spacing between uh, each one of those slats. So I basically just divided, I think it was, it's six openings, so I just divided that up uh, from the measurement that I got and made a small uh, gauge block that was that dimension, I think it was like 0 0.760. And then here on the end, I'm just clamping up a stop so that I can uh, just set the pieces in and nail them because they're, they're all measured off to be flush on the end. I need to get a new nail gun. This one sucks. Um, if it's soft material, it just blows through. If it's hard material like this oak, then uh, it doesn't go all the way in. It doesn't matter how I set the air pressure or my regulator or whatever. It just sucks. So I have to go back and hammer everything in. Which is not a bad thing because it doesn't blow it in too far. So I just go back and tap it flush. So you can see on this last one here, the gauge block just barely doesn't want to go in. It's off by a few thousandths on the very last one on that corner there. So that's pretty good. It worked out good. You can't see any any deviation. It, it looks Everything looks straight and evenly spaced. So I changed out my nails to some shorter nails. Uh, I think those are like 5 eighths. 
so I can tack down those those other supports there. I think that's going to work out good. It shouldn't bow. The the shelves aren't going to have a tremendous amount of weight placed on them, so should be pretty good. And here I'm just sanding everything. I think I went down to 320, so I started with 180 and then 320. And uh, this wood has a lot of beetle holes in it, so I'm making sure I blow it off real good so I can get all the sawdust out of those holes so you can see them. And I gave it three coats of water-based poly. I won't bore you with all of that. And we'll skip right to putting the casters on. So these casters were made to be mounted with bolts to a, a metal surface I believe because the holes are, are pretty big they're like 3 8 holes so I don't have any pan head screws to be able to install them uh, with with wood type screws um, I have uh, countersunk head wood screws and I could put washers on that but that looks kind of crappy so um, I've got a, a different technique you're gonna see here in a minute which worked out really well I don't know that I'd want to do this in any kind of softwood, but in hardwood, I don't really see it as a problem. And this, again, is not a super uh, high-stress application. It's not uh, got a tremendous amount of weight on the, the cart, so it should be fine. I shouldn't have any problem out of it. So I'm just getting all the, the center holes marked with a, a uh, punch there to make sure I've got everything aligned properly. And then I'm just using a guide to drill the holes to make sure I get a, a nice straight hole because I'm going to basically tap this with a bolt. So instead of running a, a tap through the hole, I just drilled the hole out to be the standard tap size for a quarter 20, which is, uh, I believe, uh, 0.201. Um, and then just drove the bolt in with the, the impact driver and it, it worked great. I got nice, uh, f nicely formed threads. And uh, if I did that with a tap, I believe it would be a little bit too loose. I've done that before and it, it, was, it was kind of, uh, um, didn't feel good whenever it tightened up at the very end. But these felt really good. It uh, snugged right up and uh, didn't have any, any issues and they're mounted properly here I'm just drilling some holes in the bottom of the blast cabinet so I can mount it to the stand and here I'm just uh, squaring off uh, marked uh, with a sharpie on the inside with uh, the, where the hole locations are and then took took it back off again marked uh, those locations and drilled them out so I could uh, mount it I believe I used uh, one and three quarter, uh, quarter twenties, some button heads, and just bolted it right through the frame to the the uh, cabinet. As you can see, it's the right height for me. The buckets uh, just do fit. Kind of like I planned it that way. And you can see there the bottom is completely open, which makes it super easy to change your media. I changed out the crappy light that came with this cabinet with a LED panel that I made and there you go easy to move around uh, can store all the media right there on the cart uh, should work great and there's what scrap I had left over turned out pretty good not too much waste and I can use some of that for for other stuff it turned out so nice that the wife wanted to find another reason to use it in the house of course she said it was too nice for shop furniture and thanks for watching